Welcome to Tech Abilities, produced live in the Blind Abilities studio. I want to thank all of you for listening and for sending in your feedback. It's well appreciated. And if you want to send us some feedback, give us a call at 612-367-6093. Leave a message. We'd love to hear from you. Or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Be sure to check out the show notes for all the tech tidbits and news that we cover in this episode. And you can use chapters. If your podcast player of choice has the chapters feature, go ahead, nibble away at this episode or take it all in in one big meal. That's the way it was designed. And chapters work good. And we love to make that feature available. So without further ado, let's get this show started. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear they got a saddle that you can put Astro on so it can ride the Roomba. You need to put a Womp Womp in there. Astro. <laughs> and the watch would go bloop. I tell you, my 12 Pro Max, when I put it in my pants and I'm outside working, it, it can pull my pants down almost. Whoop, whoop. I want to replace my dog with Astro. I did get the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Okay, I'll try it. Then I hit space and boom. Because it's so easy. Fabulous. <laughs> hey, Tree. Hello. Soul Tree. God's just sitting. Did you drive in today? No, I didn't. I'm only eight years old. I don't have a driver's license yet. Okay, of course not. Let's start the voice lessons. Okay. Did you practice your lines? Uh... Really? Daddy did, though. Oh, so he wants to be a podcaster, huh? Yeah. Well, let's get started. Okay. Put something behind that. Okay. Let's try Welcome to Tech Abilities. Welcome to Blind. Uh, welcome to Tech Abilities. <laughs> I do the same thing. Good. Let's try again. Welcome to Tech Abilities. That's it. Perfect. Marlon, what do you do? do well i uh i um <clears throat> well what i mean to say is i uh why are you always in the cafeteria well i oh <laughs> uh, i uh, ah saved by the <laughs> bell Mars. astro make me a hot chocolate what do you do around here why are you always in the cafeteria? You too, Astro. <laughs> you too? Yo, Trey Trey. Hey, how's it going? I have a bone to pick with you, Mr. Thompson. A bone to pick? What's up? What's up, Trey? How on earth could you forget about me in the last episode? Oh, that. Hey, this show. You're on this show. Good. I promise. Promise. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Hey, I'll even get Marlon to make you a hot chocolate. Okay. All right. All right. Trey! Bye bye. Goodbye. All right, live from the Blind Ability Studio, I'm Jeff Thompson from Friendly, Minnesota. This is the Tech Ability Show, and with me in the studio, we got Serena Gilbert. Serena, welcome to the show. Hi, Jeff. You didn't say friendly, friendly. Is it unfriendly now? No, it's still friendly, friendly. Still but, friendly? You know, I'm trying to make the podcast a little bit shorter, just tighten it up a little bit. <laughs> that one word will make a huge difference. Don't worry. <laughs> and out there on the West Coast, we got Rocky Gomez. Welcome. Thanks, Jeff. I noticed you're talking a little bit faster all of a sudden. Is there a reason for that? <laughs> it's that latte. Does that have to do with making the podcast go by quicker? <laughs> yeah, all those people that don't speed it up, we just did. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do, heaven help you. Now you got Jeff doing auctioneer voice. Oh, goodness. You. Ah, bringing back last podcast, that auctioneer thing. That was kind of funny. That's when, right. That, that That's was out right. of the blue. It was like, where'd that come from? That was kind of cute. <laughs> all right. And Jesse, St. Paul, Minnesota, how you doing? Well, Jeff... I'll do it just the opposite way to mess with you. No, just kidding. Um, anyway, no, I'm doing pretty good. He's your neighbor. It's all fun. And another fun thing was a discovery. This weekend, I did my camper, washed and waxed it. They got this new solution, so I wanted to figure out. I read the whole thing on how to add three ounces per gallon to rinse afterwards. And Serena sent me a message, too, saying that she discovered that when you open up your camera, that it'll start reading text, the live text, the OCR, and even in magnifier. But this has really come to a new level lately. And I was just using the Apple camera. Wow. Well, it's funny because for lunch, we bought some Trader Joe's frozen macaroni. We bought two different kinds. I was like, I at least need to know which one I'm heating up, so I'm not surprised. And I initially opened up Seeing AI to scan the barcode, and it wasn't cooperating. So I was like, let me just try the camera. And it read it live, like 
you, you kind of point towards the item that you want to look at. And it said a box of macaroni and cheese. And then it read some of the stuff on the front cover of it. So I knew which one I had. So and it was fast. It was so, so fast, way faster than I believe seeing AI, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that, that I haven't really tried the live stuff too much. I noticed it a little bit, but haven't delved into that much. I did try where you have it and then, you know, where you have it on the viewfinder and then you can flick to the right to do like a scan and then you can manipulate it, copy it or whatever you want to do. And that worked really well as uh, too. And what I noticed, even going back to existing, like your photo library, going from iOS 14 to 15, I was genuinely kind of surprised and impressed with how much more detail and generally speaking, how much more accurate detail they're adding to photos. I'm like, oh, wow, they actually got that much detail in there. And sometimes they'll mix detail with even, like I had a picture of my parents. They went on a vacation a couple of years ago and, you know, we're touring around South Dakota and they took a picture in front of a sign. And like, oh, two people in front of a sign that says, I'm like, oh, wow, that's pretty impressive. So yeah, mm-hmm. they've come a long way. Well, that reminds me because Jeff texted me. I think you, no, you emailed me, Jeff. I had posted a picture over the weekend and it was a picture of my husband and I standing kind of perpendicular to our front yard and there's a stop sign over my right hand shoulder and it read like what did it say Jeff was it like two people posing in front of a a yard green grass head leaning on shoulder stop (laughs) yeah (laughs) because there was a stop sign right Right. behind it (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, I'm kind of impressed, actually. It's It does surprising. an amazing job. Way better than the Facebook alt text. Because when I'm scrolling through Facebook, I'll listen to the automatic text. And then I'll just let it keep going and then hear what it says for the Apple one. Like there was one picture where it said two people posing in front of a chain link fence. That's pretty descriptive. Mm. And then another one was like two young boys uh, uh, posing on a baseball field. Like that is way more descriptive where I feel like I could confidently comment and be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool, than two people posing in grass. If they could only take some of that AI smarts and maybe make uh, Siri a little smarter, maybe that would be good for next update. Hmm. I am pretty happy with Siri's performance right now, though, as far as the speediness and snappiness of it, with it being processed on the phone now. Knowledge-wise, she's still pretty derpy, though. Yes, I would agree with that. Derpy. (laughs) That's a new one. That's right with up there with janky. What? I like it. And you could ask Siri, define derpy. Good luck with that. The other thing, you want to go into your rotor section, make sure you're set for actions in this. And then you want to flip up to explore image and then double tap on that. And then it'll like re-picture it in a sense. And you can just do a two finger swipe down and it'll just start reading everything on there. So especially if you're reading the backside of a package where you might have the instructions or That's cool. ingredients. Yeah. It's just, it's a whole new level. It's versatile. Before we dig into this, we're going to make sure that we have all the settings we need to be set to use the detected text. Now there's a couple ways to take this trip to the camera settings. I've tried using Siri to open camera settings, but it just doesn't work that well. So you can ask Siri to open settings, or you can just tap on settings, settings, swipe on down the camera, camera button, and swipe on down and you'll see show detected text, show detected text on, make sure that toggle is on. These are a couple other settings in the camera section that I make sure are set the way I like them. Use volume up for burst off. I like making sure this one's turned off because who knows, you may want to take a picture with your volume up button and hold it just a little bit too long and boom, there's 12 pictures right in your camera taking up space. It's a pain to clean them out. Scan QR codes on. And this one, you never know when a QR code is going to be so handy to just focus on and go right to the website and receive some information that it holds. Scene detection on. And scene detection, well, that'll let you be able to look around your photo and find certain objects that it recognizes. It's a good thing to start with it turned on. So let's open up the camera and take a look at the wash and wax solution that I need to do my camper with. We'll start out by opening up our camera. Now you can do this from your lock screen or you can invoke Siri and ask her to open camera or you can just go up to the camera icon, single finger double tap. Camera. Viewfinder, focus unlocked, image. 
Now just touch your finger to the center of the screen and that'll bring focus to the image. Viewfinder, focus locked, image, bottle, wood processed, possible text, GEL Gloss 21177 RV wash and wax extra heavy duty concentrated formula is the premium. Now if you're careful and hold still, it'll keep reading. However, I like to take the picture so then I can explore the text the way I want to. So let's take a picture. Take picture button. Text detected. Now to get to this photo, I'll go to photo and video viewer button, which you can find by swiping or by going down near the lower left hand corner, that area. Photo and video viewer button. Single finger double tap. Detected text. And sometimes it's like, boom, there it says detected text. Sometimes you have to bring focus to it and touch the picture by bringing your finger to the center of the screen and just touching once. Detected text, GL gloss. Wash and wax, 21,177 extra heavy duty concentrated formula is the premium, RV wash. Cleans and shines without streaking or water. Now you can explore by direct touch by moving your finger around the screen. Contains, D-vanilamine lauroilamide, RV wash. Contains, D-vanilamine rinse off hard to using the soft duty RV wash and wax in a bucket. What's really nice is the ability to actually break this down and read by line, character, or word. So I just activate my rotor by twisting. Characters, words, lines. Now you can flick up or down, whether you want to go forward or backwards. RV wash. Cleans and shines without streaking or water spotting and leaves a perfect showroom shine. Directions. Pour two three ounces of gel gloss heavy. Okay, this is what I'm looking for, the directions. So I'm going to break it down to words so I can get every bit of detail. Activate my rotor by twisting. Lines. Words. Flick up. Directions. Pour two minus three ounces of gel gloss heavy duty rv wash ampersand wax in a bucket fill with water now we can switch the lines just activate the rotor twist lines and there you go single finger flick up using a soft cloth or wash mitt or soft hand brush for hard to reach and high places lather on generously now in a perfect world this would read line by line sometimes it gets stuck so you gotta nudge it a little bit i kind of just move my finger around sometimes or i flick or swipe and you know rinse off to a streak free shine dry with a soft towel detect a data phone number eight zero zero four two four nine three zero zero link when you do find some text that's live meaning that it has the word link following it, such as a phone number, an address, a website. You just single finger, double tap and hold. Camera. Preview. Preview. Image. 8004249300. And your options will be as follows. Just single finger swipe left to right. Call. 8004249300. Button. Send message. Button. FaceTime. Button. FaceTime audio. Button. Add to contacts, button, copy, button, dismiss context menu, button. And there you go. Your text becomes alive. Now I'd like to make a note here. Sometimes when you do the single finger double tap and hold, your focus may land at the bottom of the menu. This is random. So you might have to swipe right to left or just move around and you'll find the menu. So I hope you enjoy this new camera feature. Ba -bow, ba -bow. Oh yeah. And Serena and I were discussing, she goes, I didn't even have to take a picture. And she was kind of proud of that. And I said, well, <laughs> I can <laughs> hop, you skip, such jump. such a smart aleck. <laughs> I can frolic around all the way while I'm cleaning my camper and be able to go to yeah. back to that information because I took the picture. I could actually go line by line or do it in my own time. I haven't played with the live stuff too much. You know, I've done it where you it says that there's oh, text available and then cool. I flicked. But what I'm what I'm curious about is does it perform any differently like when you're doing the short text mode in seeing AI like how sensitive is it it starts reading you text and then you accidentally maybe you subtly move your phone It's pretty sensitive and that's what you yes. want Does it then start over and like oh we found new text It does Yes okay. you want it to you want it to jump as quickly as the view changes so that in case you already got whatever it's reading you don't want it to right. sit and think it's waiting for you to do something with what it's already read if you want to show it new text as soon as there's a screen change you want it to I notify you so that right. in case you're lining up to take that picture for example if you don't have any vision like me and you want to snap the photo that Jeff took I really needed to keep reading so I know how much is in the viewfinder but I find that it does better than seeing AI in that it seems like it grabs more text at a given time so when you hmm. pointed it at the box I'm assuming it read a whole bunch of information. I find that with seeing AI, I kind of have to manipulate it a little bit and wait and move the phone. I and would agree. Phone. 
hold my mouth right and maybe move the box and stand it up and move it in the light and, you know, play with it a little bit to, hey, I got text here. And then it kind of seems to, Hmm. I don't know, focus and and read it. But sometimes it takes a few minutes where for some reason, this ability to read directly from the viewfinder is just, it's instantaneous. I mean, the minute it sees text, it starts reading it. Well, and it does more than just the text. Like when I when I was identifying the box of macaroni and cheese, right. before it read the text, it said a box of macaroni. Fro- I think it even said a box of frozen macaroni and cheese. And then it hmm, read me because cool. it was it said like mac and cheese, yeah, four don't... cheese blend. Like it said all this stuff that was on the box, I, I which is amazing that it identifies what you're pointing at first yeah. and then reads you the text. I, I've, yeah. like I said, it I saw have my to coffee with cup more. with the warming house on the side. From I saw my coffee cup with the Minnesota thing. I mean, it can mm-hmm. read not only there's a cup there, but then it'll say what's on mm-hmm. the side of the cup. It's fascinating. Well, the other thing you want to make sure you want to go into settings and go all the way down to camera, all the way down. You think of the way they do these events and portray the camera they'd have it right at the top they go all the way down the camera (laughs) tap on it and you have to turn on show detected text mine was just on by default and make sure that's turned on yeah it might be on by default but some of us run betas and some of us update and do other things Mm -hmm. things change yeah it gets screwed around like luckily it doesn't shut off voiceover ever (laughs) if it's not reading that's the place to go check and make sure that's turned on if in case Mm -hmm. you're trying to use this feature and you touch it's important to give focus to that window and once you've done that then it'll just arbitrarily start grabbing whatever the camera sees the only thing that i was just thinking of is i was going to do a review eventually here of my new little uh new iphone toy and i'm thinking boy if i use my old phone to record that and i have voiceover on anytime text comes up on the screen and i'm trying to record the video it'll be like blah 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 <laughs> So you don't want it to read then. Try to do screen recording. And then I don't know if you have a mixer, but you can do a screen recording of what you're doing directly on the phone and it'll record voiceover. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I I have a program to do that. But I mean, I'm like physically showing the phone, not, you know, take using one phone to take a picture of another Well, you can go into your camera settings and turn that off then. Right. So it doesn't recognize detected yeah. text. Well, and it's it's convenient because the camera button is just right there on your lock screen. That's the thing where it's like, okay, I might use this more. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. It's really something that just kind of like, how did you put it, Rocky, in your text? You just that they just kind of did it. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is, you know, when you four finger triple tap, now I have it set to people detection. And by the time we record our next episode, I will have made my trek back to work. So I will report on how well people detection works, finding empty seats on Amtrak and BART. But you know, it's a quick, quick gesture to turn it on and off. And once you get used to, you know, so many ways to do it, you can map it to a shortcut. You can use one of those quick gestures to open up the magnifier. Like you said, Serena, going from the lock screen. I mean, there's just so many ways to control center to get in there quickly. I think it's just something that once people get used to using it, it's so powerful and it's so new that I think folks don't really realize yet all of the things that, especially with iOS 15, that will be built in. Mm Mm-hmm. To magnify. I like all these surprises that come up. Not the stuff that's all noted. You see all these posts and all these demos, all this stuff, and all of a sudden you stumble across something and you go, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you like it. <laughs> a little Easter egg there. You know, all of a sudden our tech abilities text start flaring up like, hey, the group message. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> There's another event here and we'll go through this kind of quickly, but Amazon had an event. Did anyone see this coming? I saw something last week that they were having one. And then I was like, I don't care. Um, And then I was just scrolling through my, I think it was Google News that I was scrolling through and then saw the article. So I went and and read up on it and I was like, okay, there's actually some some pretty significant things in this one this time. Yeah, I didn't even realize they were having an event until you had posted it in our little thread. I'm like, oh, I was actually in a meeting that morning. I'm like, I looked at it and went, oh, there's some actually neat stuff here. Serena sent it and I went Lizzo on it. I, I All I could say to myself was, I do my hair toss, check my nails. <laughs> I love that you know that song. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, she she I did love record it song. here in Minneapolis. It could have been Denver. She used to live in Aurora. It could have been T- Detroit or just Detroit. She used to work at a King Supers in Aurora, side note. Mm-hmm. Anyways. <laughs> so you say Lizzo gets around? Stop it. Be nice to Lizzo. Is she dating Drake? No, I'm kidding. Who? She wants to date Drake, according to I, her I, last song. <laughs> right, right. Moving on. What about this Astro Robot for $999 if you act now? 
I love hey. the name. I love the name. I don't know if I want that device. <laughs> you don't want Astro following you? <laughs> no, you know what? I want Astro for my guide dog. I want to replace my dog with Astro. It even has a cup holder. A cup holder? I love it. Can it make Astro, me coffee? Go get me a coffee. Astro, go make my latte. <laughs> It, yeah, it had a dog food dispenser. <laughs> so it can give him dog treats? That's an accessory, though. It doesn't have a thumb. So it can't type? So what? It can't <laughs> type. <laughs> so it's not really like Astro, is what you're saying. <laughs> Astro can't type? That's okay. <laughs> I like the thermostat idea. Now, that really kind of got me. Uh, one of the things I was curious to see what they would put out at this event and how much of it was really going to register on my radar and how much was just not going to make me take notice at all. And most of it was kind of interesting, but it was sort of novelty. I don't think I'd pay a thousand dollars for Astro yet, but in 10 years, you know what, if he can scrub my kitchen floor or wash my windows or, you know, do enough useful tasks, I might just I buy one. I think the thermostat is cool though. Yeah, I've always been fascinated just with like robots and I always thought it would be really cool to have a robot of some type, you know, especially like you said, being able to do more like practical things or, you know, not just use it as a security <laughs> camera. But, do you remember Jeeves? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I mean, even, even like having, or Nebo, um, you know, Nebo? once... Once your conversational AI gets to the point where you can kind of conversationalize with whether it's just something on your phone or an actual robot or something, that's just that stuff has always just fascinated me. And for a thousand bucks, this first gen, it's really neat, but it, it just doesn't really have enough practicality for me to really like, yes, I would love it just to play with it, but I don't really see much practicality in this version. I could see if you lived in a house, though, and you had a family, and, like, especially if you wanted to monitor, like, what was going on. You had pets that were, um, you know, misbehaving when you were at work or something, and you wanted to, you know, I could see where that could be kind of a neat way to go, or their little helicopter drone thing. It's just like the drone all over again. I'm like, okay, so this thing whips around my house and looks at all my stuff and sees what I'm watching and looks at my mail on the side table and sees what I'm reading and hmm. sees what time my kids go to school. And, I, you know, I just to me, I think right away all the security flags go on red alert for me. I think, okay, do I really hmm. want Amazon shuffling around my house unbidden when I'm gone? The thing is, say you're at work and you do have a pet, you could always tune into your pet and, you know, like, oh. I do that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Alexa, I drop in. Okay, oh, I did. But, but this will have a camera so people who can see can actually see the pet and I actually hit a button and for an accessory for a small fee, it can serve treats or they... Yeah. Oh my God. That's so I just started <laughs> laughing when I read that. My dog would look But that. say you had someone that had, you know, prescriptions or something in it that at a certain time that it comes finds you, you know, something. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. For a caregiving, it's huge. Yeah. For health care, I, I think this of could, that. that. That's one of the ways they're slanting it. And I think in the, you know, again, 20 years down the road, how are they going to use these? These could be really good mm -hmm. in-home assistance for people that could help do an awful lot of physical things things. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that too, because when you first mentioned the pet thing, I was like, well, I don't know if the pet would trust the robot or either that or the pet would have more admiration oh. of the robot than the human. Mine would if you feed it. <laughs> but then thinking through what it could mean for somebody that maybe has some physical disabilities or something, this could empower them to be able to actually have and care for a pet independently. Good so point. it's kind of interesting. Or to live on their own. Imagine helping somebody in a wheelchair transfer, or helping somebody with dementia take medication on time or just the idea that it's there and able to do a certain task at a certain time mm -hmm. could be huge for somebody who lives alone and just wants to keep their autonomy. I could just see like, you know, the pet thing like, oh yeah, once it once the pet realizes, oh, this thing gives treats, you come home and your $900 <laughs> robot is just trash. It's like, give me my food. Well, I do have a question, Rocky, because I know you said you were excited about the the smart thermostat. And I, I think it's cool that it's at such an affordable price point. But then I also wondered, you know, the people who have wanted smart thermostats, they've been around for so long now. Is it almost too late for this? It's hard to say. I think if some other company had done it, maybe the reaction would be different. But because Amazon is Amazon and, you know, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see. The price point is good. 
I think for a lot of people that want to have something that's accessible, that don't want to invest a ton of money, this is a really affordable price point, even for somebody maybe who just has, you know, an Echo Dot in the kitchen or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think about that segment of the market that may not want to go out and invest a, a bunch of money in something or may not have a robust home kit set up or smart home set up really mm -hmm. where they just want something yeah. that's kind of affordable and usable that they can have somebody connect up in, you know, half an hour and this is the ticket. Amazon's always made it attainable for anybody to get into it. I mean, you can get these devices for $39, $59, whatever it is, but they came out with the Echo Show 15 and it's mountable to the <gasps> wall. And the thing <laughs> is that really threw me for a loop there was I used to be in the calendars. I used to print them. I used to be a printer and we did the Sports Illustrated Sun Tzu calendars. We did Terry Redland <laughs> calendars. We did mm. calendars. They used to be an art thing back in the day. Mm -hmm. But now today, as someone who's visually impaired, I don't really care about a calendar on the wall. I don't care about whiteboards on the wall. I don't care about like, oh, take out the garbage written onto a little screen or a chalkboard or something. Are these devices going to recognize... Or do you have to ask Astro what's on the 15 inch Echo? <laughs> I think a lot of like, you know, your your Echo Show 15 and all that. I mean, those are really geared toward visual, you know, visual users. You can just at a glance, oh, look at the calendar, look at the weather, look at whatever kind of widgets you want to put up there. And it's just like a quick convenience thing more than anything. Wouldn't you love an iPad on your wall or a tablet on your wall? I would love one on my kitchen wall. Yeah, it's I can so see it on the fridge or something like that where you're actually going to, but then you're talking about contact with it all the time unless it's voice operated but it's so convenient to have it up off the counter so when i'm using it i don't want it on the counter where i can touch it i'm using my hands i'm cooking i'm doing things i'm talking to it mm -hmm. what concerns me is how much is going to be echoed back with speech and how much is going to be visual and, and i don't know if there's a discrepancy between the echo devices when they have a screen on them versus the using a speaker how much it will just choose to show you rather than speaking. it is different i I have an Echo Show. I don't even know which mm -hmm. generation. And you'll ask it for things and it'll say, it'll just put it on the screen. Yeah. And the screen's accessible. It's not like that's a problem, but it's kind of a little obnoxious because you're like, I'm using my voice for a reason. Right. right. If I want to walk but, over and swipe, I would use. But I could see a use case in the kitchen for recipes though. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's something if you got oriented to the screen and you're just trying to figure out, okay, how much flour do I need or whatever, it could make things a lot easier than having an iPad or whatever where you're like oh i don't want to get it dirty or whatever you know so i have a bracket on my wall that holds my ipad it actually holds the ipad air and it looks really dorky but it's a magnetic bracket and i stuck it onto the door i didn't have anything metal on the wall so i stuck it onto the box for the breaker box <laughs> and it's so silly but it just sits there and it's really awesome because it keeps it up off my counter but i can walk over to it and do things if i'm listening to something i can use the the speakers in the iPad, well, he did it with the old iPad Air, but it was great for recipes or for getting information or for FaceTiming people. If I wanted to record when I would podcast from the kitchen, I'd throw it up on the wall because it wouldn't pick up noise when I would set something on the counter. It wouldn't rattle the mic. It wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't, the refrigerator and everything coming on wouldn't just drown mm -hmm. out the mic because it was on the wall. So it's up out of the way. I can move around. I've got really good stereo separation because I'm moving back and forth from both sides of the iPad. If I'm cooking and I want them to hear things sizzling in the pan, the mic is just perfectly aligned with the stove. So it worked out really well because of the positioning. And if I wanted to call somebody, it's up at face level, you know, so the camera is right about eye level for me. So I can FaceTime, say I call my mom, I can run all around the kitchen and do the dishes and make the coffee and make dinner while I'm talking to her and she can still see me so she doesn't trip out. I love hanging the tablet on the wall. It, it's such a silly thing, but you be amazed how useful it is when you can just get it up off the counter but still usable in a place like that. With the Echo Show, the gentleman behind the Echo Show is actually Josh Mealy. He went to Amazon and he just won a $625,000 fellowship, one of 24. He did. For accessibility, correct? to our yeah. very own Berkeley Blink. Accessibility, yep. Congratulations, so that's kind of neat that. Josh. Yeah, he's wonderful. Plus he did a lot of, a lot of stuff with San Francisco Lighthouse down there. He was on our board for a number of years. He, was he used on to the teach board. soldering and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so it's really neat. But the show is something that I've uh, heard mixed reviews about. And 
you know, it's for some people, maybe not for others. Plus, it's an Amazon device. Mm -hmm. I do have my Echoes. I do have Ring. So, you know, it does fall into this environment that I have around. I just, I don't know if I want it on the wall, but you do sell it pretty well there that it is, it's real estate. It's out of the way. It's never in the way. I like that. Well, one thing with the Echo Show too, that the feature, um, and I don't, I I'll have to do some research on this. I I think this feature still exists. I've never tried it with mine because I have other ways of identifying things. But the show and tell feature, if it's on the wall and you're like, is this buttermilk yeah. or regular milk? What am I holding? That could be super, oh, okay. super useful. It, it makes a sound when you're in the view and the viewing area of it. So if you're off to the side or whatever, mm -hmm. it makes a little tone so you can tell if you're holding it within the view of the camera. But if you say word that I won't say, what am I holding or what's in my hand? It'll try to identify that that package or whatever. And if it's not getting it, you'll be able to tell by that sound. So you need to rotate it or spin it or flip it around or whatever to get the label. It sure beats going, here, Astro. Here, Astro. And waiting for that little <laughs> thing Astro. to come crawling. Then you Astro hold it down by your knee. There. Yeah. The, <laughs> Astro will just be there, though. Astro took the can out for you. You tell Astro, exactly. go get me a can of tuna. And Astro goes and gets the can. But does Astro know? Will Astro know? This will be the debate. Like when you're cooking, sure. you're going from does the counter to the refrigerator to the thing to the island to the stove, you know, back <laughs> forth to the sink. No, yeah. Astro will be cooking. Get this right. It's going to be Astro <laughs> doing the cooking. It's not just going to pop out of his tummy completely. I'm gonna sit on my, meal. There you oh, go. Astro, make my dinner. <laughs> Astro, bring me a pizza. <laughs> it's like the Jetsons. Like I, I, we were just talking. Charles and I were talking. We were like, "Don't didn't you think we'd have flying cars by now?" Like the Jetsons, and it's like. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I'm ready. I'm waiting. We don't have anything from the Jetsons, if you really think about it. But now we have Astro. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they have a lot of other devices coming out too. And the list goes on and on. I think there was at least There's a kid's 14, one that looks 15. really cool. Yeah, that was sort of neat. The kids glow. Which is more of a connection thing for them, like a community almost, you yeah. know, when you get them things And play going. games on it and mm -hmm. stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it turns the surface of like your table into like a little play area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can still see your teacher or your relative that you're... You can interact. Yeah, interacting with on the actual screen. Yeah, that's kind of a neat... It's Disney. pretty pricey, though. Oh, I didn't even look at the price for it. It's but. 250 We ah. can say, hey, Disney right now, but pretty soon you might not be able to, especially if you're at the... You know, at Disney itself and the Fear hotels the will park. have coming out with a Mickey Mouse one too. A stand for the Echo Show. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they got a lot of new stuff for the ring, the doorbell to identify packages. You know, the the list went on and on. The Nest could already do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my Nest already, it'll tell you if a package was delivered and if someone picked it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am sort of curious with the Disney stuff. Like, you know, they mentioned a lot of the stuff in the hotels, but they kind of breezed over the stuff that you would be able to do do at home and it sounded like that was going to be like almost you is it a one-time thing or do you have to no, pay it's a, a subscription it'd be 20 dollars a month i believe is oh, what they said okay or, no the 20 dollars a month was for the amazon kid stuff i they didn't actually i don't think they said what the price was for the hey disney stuff yeah i didn't think i didn't but think it is so, a subscription i was sort of curious to know like what types of things you could do with the hey disney stuff at home like i don't know i don't know it'd be cool just to be like i'm gonna change my uh echo version to sound like darth vader because why not <laughs> yeah that would be cool you mentioned it earlier jesse about the drone and finally it's going to be available that you can have the drone zoom around your house just check on your house more of these privacy creepy. type things. it is kind of creepy, creepy but it is kind of a neat thing that say you don't have anybody else at home and you're on vacation you just go around your house once or twice you know it's like mm -hmm. it's kind of cool i mean why not just have stationary cameras then like you, you know, know what? <laughs> if it zipped around outside i think it wouldn't disturb me nearly as much if it patrolled the perimeter of my property i'd be scared someone would steal me. it <laughs> well it's supposed to move fast right you're not i mean it doesn't mean they wouldn't but it's that doesn't bug me nearly as much somehow when we bring well, did it you indoors ever, did you ever see the classic 80s movie chopping mall enough said oh, i've God. never seen that <laughs> that's great 
It's so cheesy. It's dumb, but it's great. I was like, was this a grade B? What do you call that? Budget? One of those movies? It's, it's a horror movie. Those, B movie. It, horror it's a horror movie. Would... Well, it's basically where you have these, there, there's these three <laughs> security robots. They're on these like tank tread things. And like they're, they're meant for security robots. You have to, you know, badge in, you show them the badge and then it's like, okay, you're cleared to be in the mall or whatever. Oh, we need um, that. But instead of, it's like the dark version of Short Circuit where they get, the thing gets zapped by lightning and then they turn evil and you got people that they are, go crazy in they the stay out. After after hours in the mall, and then like yeah, just down astro, and, down whoo, astro. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know nothing could possibly go wrong. I am curious, how tall is Astro? Did anyone see about eighteen inches? It's pretty small. Oh, so it's tiny. Oh, he's that's, little. That's oh. actually way more creepy than I thought. So that is weird. A ten yeah. inch screen, so you have to like bend down to interact with it. Mm, I don't. Yeah, want but it. it's kind of like that's... on a pole, so it can swivel. Mm, that's creepy. It can look up and down. And- hey, Serena, Astro, I actually think you're pretty tall. Hardy, har, har. Hmm. That's what I was looking at. I was looking at the size and the weight of it. It's not that heavy. It's mm-hmm. only about 26 I pounds thought that it- total. I yeah. thought it'd be like four feet or something. So did I. I want so did I. But it'll it'll charge up pretty fast. Forty five minutes to charge it back up. It's basically a Roomba on steroids. <laughs> Does it vacuum for us too? Because then that would be amazing. Yeah, now if you'd vacuum or clean the mm-hmm. floor, I could totally Which, get yeah. around that. I hear they got a saddle that you can put Astro on, so it can ride the Roomba. Oh, Just goodness. kidding. No. Just kidding. Almost like Toy Story now. When he cleans, I'll buy him. Yeah, I because th- they, they could have easily integrated that into it. Totally. <laughs> if Roomba can do it, he could mop the floor. Mm. Yeah, slap a little tablet head on there. Sweep the floor. For $1,000? He, he should clean. He should make us some drinks too. He could he could dust. I mean, it's just the same motion, right? He could dust furniture. He could clean. Purify the, the air. I, I would buy him. <laughs> Humidifier. Yeah. There you go. Another feature that I saw that they could do is you can create your own sounds to invoke like things to happen. So that's kind of cool, you know. So what like, you could do the clap on clap off thing. <laughs> Hey, there's no, I think I, it's more if it hears a certain sound. No, it's it's not so the it's deta- not it's just not breaking the, glass, right? No, you can actually program it to do certain things, so it does certain things now. So it, so if it that'll be interesting thing, to see actually in action, because I that was hard for me to wrap my head around. Hmm. Wait, what other we, than clapping? I'm I missed what what are we um, what are we talking about here? I'm, uh, the A device. Those devices, okay. they're going to get a feature now where you can actually tell it certain commands that you can make up. You can, you know, like change the text to a command or something. Okay. Another. You, but then you can have it do its routine. So you're going to be able to program a, a routine with a sound okay. you know, or something like of that when nature. When you hear the door but, slam, call Jeff or something. You know, I can see, again, thinking about accessibility and mobility, though, if you have somebody who is really nonverbal or can't speak or mm-hmm. if they're in like yeah. a dangerous situation and if you have some sort of a sound that could trigger yeah. where you're, you're not saying anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like if you snap there, your finger no twice, you know. Well, right. I think it, if it can detect, honestly, if it can legitimately detect the sound and recognize the sound and not do what it does with my TV and be triggered by other sounds and think that it hears a certain thing when it does, and if it can actually dial into a specific sound well enough. It could be a really amazing feature. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just want to point out when we're talking about these making sounds, last podcast, there was a really hidden gem of uh, funny, and I was going to give her the, the funniest thing during the podcast award, which we've never done before. So it would have been a first and it still could be right now. Rocky, uh, Lisa was talking about how you could program that device to go and, and it would understand it. And you said, wow, it speaks. <laughs> it speaks. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> While I was editing it, I just paused and just started laughing <laughs> because you made that sound like <laughs> like a language. Yeah, it speaks. Haven't you ever spoken before? Well, you guys mentioned a lot of like caregiver features. Like one of the things they announced was some expansion of their caregiver stuff. Mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. not fully yeah. aware of how it works. It sounds like it used to be something that didn't cost anything and now will be costing something from what I read. Oh yeah. But that's a whole nother thing too is it could help with all those things. Just monitoring and things like that. If you have a parent or a sibling or someone who needs some extra care that you could have a device there and it could monitor. You could turn it on, drop into it and it mm-hmm. can call in case of mm-hmm. emergency. It's like snooping in a sense <laughs> but for a good reason. 
Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. this is huge, though, because the the idea that the technology's here, you know, maybe it hasn't caught on yet to the degree that it will. But I, again, it's one of those things. I'm I'm into this thing tonight, looking five years, ten years mm-hmm. in the future. But I think this could really have a lot of you know significant implications on people's ability to live in their homes autonomously for longer. Once people realize how it works and what it does. Oh yeah, and that's that's the main thing about vocational rehab. You know, yep. can can they live yeah. assisted living and stuff? The thing is, if with the right products, can they live an extra five, ten years on their own? And it's Absolutely. really a big deal nowadays because if you've ever had a parent or someone who needs help that does need help, does need someone there, these devices aren't replacing that. But no. there's a point where it leads up to that point and you know there might be a spot for it and i just want to say i don't like everyone jumping against amazon for being snooping or this other group for whoever they are for breaking our privacy there is practical purposes for these because if you want to bring in a daycare person five days a week six hours a day it's that's expensive. that's very expensive yeah. but if you oh, had sure. that one little window in there sometimes i mean if, if you're going to do that you're probably the one that goes over there three times a week too you know mm-hmm. what i mean so, so it is caregiving devil's advocate i am the one that always harps about privacy but i blame all the big companies even apple I, you know, I love them all dearly and i still have the devices in my house and everything and i do think a lot of the scenarios could be creepy in theory but there is a, a very like you said a practical side I think that could really help some people. And I don't ever want to sound like I, you know, disagree with the the idea that I think this tech ultimately has the power to do a lot more positive for people and help people live more, you know, autonomous lives, I think, and more fulfilled lives longer in their Mm -hmm. own homes, maybe, you know. We're going to change that book. 1984 will change it to 2024. There you go. Well, there was another thing they announced too. The I think it's called the Halo Fitness Tracker. Yep. And I, oh, I right. it had a pretty good. I I don't remember the price point, but I remember glancing at it and thinking that, but that's not too bad. It was like around two fifty, I think. And the uh, the one thing that caught my attention is like, oh, it'll last for like a, a week charge. I'm like, God, if my only my Apple Watch would last that long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Forrest Gump could have used it when he ran across America. For real. I think it's more in line with the Fitbit. Yeah, it is. Well, but it also, there was like their own fitness service or something mm-hmm. too that kind of seemed mm-hmm. like it was similar to Apple Fitness. All this stuff is going to be in the show notes. So if you glance through the show notes and to get, they would be able to click on it and stuff like that <laughs> and grab it. There's too much stuff. Yeah, it was just on and on and on. More and than on. Apple. <laughs> Yeah, it was a pretty packed event. Like you were saying, Rocky, this stuff is affordable. This stuff is attainable. This stuff isn't out of the reach of everyone. And if you're interested in it, it's a good way to get going on it. I mean, I got my Echo devices. I got that stuff. Yeah. I got, you know. Absolutely. And Absolutely. to me, the Apple Mini, HomePod Mini, is one of the most practical things Apple put out. It's still that $99, but, you know, that's it's pretty dang good. Well, and with the HomePod Mini, though, you're not paying, I, I'm just, maybe this is just me, you're not paying for the S lady on that. You're paying for the audio sound and the quality yeah. there. I would never, like, if of all the smart speakers I have, honestly, Google is number one in regards to, if I ask it a question, I'm going to actually get the answer I want. Mm-hmm. I have, uh, in my kitchen area, I do have the Google Home, and then I do have my Sonos, you spill it backwards and forward. What's that? That's what I was trying to think of, <laughs> a word that... Forward or backwards. Palindrome. There you go. Yeah, I knew it was sort of the P. Yep. I got them there. So I always like to, oh, you're stupid. And I ask the other one, you know, oh, yeah. you're smart. But then the next week, it's the other way around. And you're right. The minis, iPod minis are really good HomePod for minis. sound. HomePod minis. <laughs> Jeez. The Apple Watch, not iWatch. <laughs> got to get this down. You think I'd get you it? You think now. that you'd be an expert by you now. Think. <laughs> uh, sometimes it just goes round and round, doesn't it? I mean, in one air out the other, right, Jeff? Yeah. Well, that event just happened, and you know, some people did buy some <laughs> devices here, so I yeah, know. Yeah, I'm curious who iPad who at this mini. table who has this table bought some stuff. The iPad <laughs> Mini, Rocky. I might have. Rocky's being <laughs> mysteriously quiet over there. Yeah. <laughs> I have a I have an empty case. I have a what's sitting up here? I have my white battery pack, Apple battery, right here, and my iPad folio, empty folio, folio case looks really cool. 
You don't have the iPad thing. yet? No. What? You ordered oh. it on launch day. I'm surprised. Oh, it was supposed to be here on the 24th. Oh, wow. Now it's pushed back to October 7th. Holy cow. Oh, wow. I'm really devastated. Everything else is here. <laughs> Did you order the iPhone? So I, you know, again... Um, I made a big production out of it last time, and I didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, all that for after that. After all that, and you didn't all order that it. for that. <laughs> I, I do have a buyer though, so I I do have I I wanted to try to get nine hundred for it, and I I'm I will be able to do that. So it'll be a worthwhile upgrade. But I'm not in any huge hurry. I'm kind of just sitting on it because it's it's gonna happen in the next two weeks, three weeks. Well, it's interesting that you say that because my mom is upgrading, and she has an iPhone ten, and mm-hmm. they're still giving. I don't know what's up with the the cell phone companies. I think it's because they want you to stay. It's their way of getting you to stay on with them for a couple yep. of years. They're giving massive amounts of money for even older devices to upgrade. Yeah. They want people on new devices to the... Well, and if you have... Because the two years. Yeah. 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 If they give you a new phone, then they're like, it's free as long as you're here for two years. But if you leave, then you have to pay the difference. Yeah, they kind of went away from the kind of con- two-year contract sort of a thing. But now they seem to be looping back around to that again more. Mm-hmm. In a, in a sneakier way. Yeah. yeah. I don't ever want another two-year. I, I look at... Lately, I've been looking at some of the... I, and I won't segue too much because I know we have other stuff to cover and I could go on the cell phone rabbit hole forever, but I keep looking at some of the other carriers, the Google Fi's and stuff to think about adding a second data line. The prices are astronomical, you know, and if I can manage to use a carrier that's a little more affordable and make it all the way over to San Francisco and back without a significant degradation to my quality, I'm just going to ditch AT&T. It's ridiculously expensive and there's no reason to pay the kind of money I'm paying for unlimited data anymore. Verizon is actually fairly affordable. Like right now we're paying for my husband's iPhone. So granted, there's an extra $50 on the bill, which his will be done, I think, next month. I think it's the last payment we'll Okay. If you don't include the $50, we pay $130 for two lines and it's unlimited everything. Free Apple Music. We haven't had hardly any issues <laughs> with yeah. coverage. So that's about what I pay, but I can get my bill down to $30. But this is two lines. With, yeah, this is for two yeah, lines. See, that's the issue is, is you need at least three lines to make it worthwhile. That's Verizon though, huh? Two lines on Verizon. Mm-hmm. And the Free Apple Music is, that's normally $15 that we were paying. Yeah. So. That's worth it. Now that's worth it because we yeah. pay. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jeff. I didn't mean to. It, it's really Jeff's on the same plan as I am. He knows. <laughs> yeah, Chuck pays all my bills too. Oh, of course, oh. of course. <laughs> I don't think I have Apple Music on my plan, as far as I know. You can pay mine, and then I won't worry about my wallet. There's two plan. Too. There's like three plans. One of them doesn't have it, and then I forget what the, it's like. Get more. Or something. I don't know. They have weird names for them, but it's the upper two plans that are unlimited everything, and you get Apple Music for free. Ah. I think AT&T does HBO Max, but you know where that's at. Yeah. Yeah. I should be more careful. Ever since Charles was grilling that big yellow bird um, a long time ago, (laughs) I've switched over to calling him Chuck. I hope he's not offended. So here's the funny thing. Only his family calls him Charles. So I call him Charles. um, His mom and his sisters and his dad call him Charles. Everyone else calls him Chuck. It's weird. I can't call him Chuck. It's weird to me. So you're totally fine. (laughs) <laughs> What's his preference? How does he? I don't think himself? he cares. He's ambidextrous, I guess. <laughs> Are his shoes called Chucks? I knew you were gonna say that. I just I, oh my curious. goodness! Just, oh my I goodness! Just, uh. So, Rocky, you got to come back here when we get the device. I can't believe you I don't know, have I can't. it. I'm shocked. Oh. I know. I, I saw that in the outline, and I thought you're oh, becoming an God. accessory store. <laughs> I would have been so bummed if like that happened because usually their shipping dates are super accurate when you check out. So yeah. That's yeah. super frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But someone did score. And they were with the other. I bought him a battery. A, a, Apple MagSafe? A, one of the MagSafe packs for his phone. $99. And um, yeah, you know what? I, I like it. It's heavy though. God, is it ever a brick? It's You know what? <laughs> your phone is light and your battery's light, but put them together and They're oh my heavy, goodness, yeah. it's. 
they're happy together, but I love that I can see the status. I, that to me is the one thing. It's it's an awful lot of extravagance for, you know, you can save 50 bucks and probably buy another pack that does the same thing, but the ability to just flip over and see your battery status along with all your other battery statuses is really huge. Convenience, anyway. just like your watch connecting up to your phone and your phone and watch connecting up to your Mac, all this stuff. That... You can plug your phone into your iPad mini if your phone runs out of battery. You can even charge it right from the USB. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that with my iPad Air. I've never even yep. thought to try that, actually. Yep. You can do I it. I never thought to try it. It makes sense because it's USB-C. Yeah. I'm going to have to try that. I'm so that. excited to play with accessories. I'm so excited. All the hubs work, all the accessories and the thumb drives and the mics. I'm just really What if excited. your iPad just says, ouch, stop that? That would be creepy. <laughs> I'll slap it. <laughs> but we did get someone that did score. He put his order in and it got delivered because I heard a text. His first text came to the Tech Abilities uh, group. Jesse? Jesse. You got the big in. The I big did. In. I did. Yeah. Wow. Like I said, I was sort Were you of holding your breath? What? Were you holding your breath? I was sort no. of like, where is he? He's so dramatic. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on the fence a little bit. Like I said, I love my my old phone, but you know there was enough features that I didn't have uh, that I wanted to take a look at both for work and personal and just some of the other stuff that I do. And you know, of course, you're going to get the bump in performance. You know, your processor and your cameras and everything. And so the I did. The so I, yeah, they're <laughs> quite good. I yeah. I did get the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, I did pre-order that, and uh, yeah, luckily it was a pretty hassle-free pre-order. Interestingly, uh, it was supposed to be there, and I should have had it on Friday, but uh, we must have had a like a substitute UPS person or something, and they were kind of dingy that day because I'm waiting for this thing. I'm waiting for it. And UPS I get this notification the <laughs> and they're like, oh, I'm sorry we missed you. I'm like, what? You're like, I've been sitting at the door the whole time. <laughs> well, no, I mean, our, our apartment complex has a package room and we have these like secure mailboxes and it's really cool. They just must have like, oh, well, we don't know how this works. So they just went to another door and knocked or something and no one let them in or something. <laughs> so they just left and they said I was going to have to wait till Monday. And I'm like, oh God, I was mad. I was trying to figure out if I, I could been go so get mad. it. Luckily, I was surprised on Saturday. They actually did, even though they said it was going to be the next business day, they did drop by and uh, I got Saturday. So what I will say is I'm actually really impressed with how far the transfer and upgrade process has come because I've had issues with that in the past. And I was even actually a little bit more surprised retrospectively that it worked because they made this big deal at their keynote where they're like, oh, this phone is going to come with iOS 15 and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't even realize until I went to bed that night because it had said, "Oh, we've done all the update, and you can get you can. We're going to install iOS 15 later tonight." And so I was on iOS 14 apparently, um, but I was still able to. I just turned the thing on. I set it right next to my uh, previous mm -hmm. my 10s Max. Yep. And it's even though seamless. they were different versions, it still actually went through. It probably took 10, 15, eh, probably 15 minutes, maybe 20, because uh, I have a whole bunch of stuff on there. Because <laughs> it takes the photos, too. Yeah, no, it, it took everything. everything. And like I said, I was... It, everything, passwords, everything. Yeah, and it's I was great. pretty impressed. Like I said, I think with all of the apps that I regularly use, there was probably a good four to six tops that I actually had to either re-sign in. There was probably only about three or four that I actually had to manually remember the passwords and sign in. Otherwise, it was the app itself remembered or the uh, Apple keychain just like, oh, do you want this password? I'm like, yes, I do, because I don't know it. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> but the update update process was pretty seamless. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the new phone. The, and accessible. Uh, it's You can set it up is, independently. It's very, yeah, no, it's very accessible. I did it all with voiceover. And it always has been. It's wonderful. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is your 10S Max sitting over there right now with its arms crossed looking at you? Like <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no. But what I did, like, you take this thing out of the box and, like, even compared to the 10s Max, it's kind of heavier. Like, you can definitely it's tell solid. it's got a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's it's, it's, uh, it's a brick. But but that's what I was leading into is that I, the battery on this thing is pretty crazy. I charged it, like, the first night after I did all the initial updates and things. 
And that Sunday, like I, I went to bed and I just fell asleep to like a YouTube playlist. So it was, you know, playing the audio of YouTube overnight unplugged, um, for pretty much most of the night. And then I, you know, made some calls, played a couple little games, listened to a couple of podcasts. I watched the equivalent of probably about two to two and a half games of football. And when the Sunday night football Packers game ended, it was still at 17%. I'm like, good Lord. For you to have streamed all night, that's impressive. Yeah, I believe it. I believe. You know, now that Johnny Ive's not there anymore, it's not all about thin, thin, right. thin, 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 tiny, skinny, thin, little, tiny, little, yeah. thin batteries. No, and like I love the, you know, I do notice like the screen is a little bit sharper. You know, they talk about the 120 hertz, you know, the adaptive display if you're a low vision user. And I guess, you know, I will say when you combine that with what I like about iOS 15, some of the more substantial features that I like about iOS 15 really does apply to low vision because now, you have, you know, you're, you still have your magnifier that's built in to use your phone as a CCTV. You have, you know, the zoom features if you want that. But these per app settings are really nice because now the some of the stuff that you could customize specifically in voiceover, you know, its features. Now I can go into apps that don't necessarily honor the dark theme and I can say, well, turn smart invert on for those apps. And then when I leave them, it, you know, it's, I don't have to keep toggling back and forth. That works really well. And then Either I didn't know about it, or I forgot about it, or something. I had read, I'm like, oh wait, Safari supports extensions now. And my first thought was, hmm, I know they have it for, you know, computer browsers. I wonder if Dark Reader is out there. It's this extension that you can use for Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge. And it basically, it's kind of like a built-in smart, like almost like a smart invert thing where it just makes all of your backgrounds of web pages uh, dark with light text, but it doesn't invert pictures. And lo and behold, I looked it up and they had the extension. It's a $4 extension. I bought it immediately and it is glorious. So now I have the dark reader theme on my desktop and I have it on my iPhone or iPad. You just basically, you have to go into the settings under the actual settings app, and then you have to enable it. And then there's an extra step where it says like, you have to tell it, if you don't want it to keep bugging you for every web page, just say like, yeah, allow it on all web pages. And then it'll just, when you ever, you go to a new page, it just honors it and you have a dark theme. So between the per app settings and the being able to support that browser extension, and then, you know, like the, just a clearer, better camera, you can zoom in just, I think you can even zoom in farther if you're using magnification because you've got that extra level of zoom on the Pro Max camera. So yeah, for low vision users, this thing is pretty great. Interesting about the extension that you got that it had a that it, I when I saw that they would have extensions I didn't even think about the oh I got so excited potential like, cost let it have there yeah I didn't even think of the potential cost though that's a whole different revenue stream for Apple that they've never dove into yeah I mean I I knew how it worked on the desktop and I'm like I use this every single day I'm like four bucks yes please I didn't even think about it I just tons of them yeah I've seen they had like password managers and stuff out there already tons as well but like the fact that they have the dark reader I'm like Yes. Can you talk mm -hmm. about where you find those extensions? Because I have not even stumbled across. I saw that it was a thing, <sighs> but I don't know where, how to get to them. Um, You know, to be honest with you, I really haven't figured that out because I the way that I found it is I coincidentally, I was kind of bopping back and forth between just updating my phone and going through Twitter. And I saw that the dark reader, their account had tweeted it. They're like, Hey, this is out now. I'm like, I'm going to click on that link and it opened yeah. up the app store and then I bought it. So I haven't so it's in the app store. Out, yeah. I haven't okay. figured out where those are just yet, but I wouldn't surprise me if they didn't have a category or something. If if the if the link led toward the to the app store. Yeah, because I just got it. Like I said, I just clicked on the link via Twitter, and then I'm like, oh yeah, went and downloaded it. Yeah, it's great. Very so cool. Far. Yeah, I like it a lot. Mr. Thompson, you're being very quiet over there. Oh, I was just checking my phone <laughs> out for the extensions. No, I was I was gonna ask you, uh, what phone are you sporting over there? <laughs> I, I still have my twelve. Mm. Max, Pro Max. Do you have a story to share with the audience? Oh, by the way, really quick PSA. <laughs> Definitely make sure that you really double check or have somebody maybe cited double check the if you're going to order a case online. I ordered a case and I like the case overall, but in the end, I absolutely hated it. 
because what I found, and I didn't pay as much attention, it looked good in the description, and I looked at the pictures kind of quickly, and it looked fine, but it had these, they were really stiff overlays for the buttons, and so when you try to hit the side button or like the volume, they didn't have two separate buttons. It was just like, you know, one long thing that you would kind of press either end to for the volume up and down. But like as a low vision user, there are times where I turn voiceover on and off a lot because sometimes I do visual things, sometimes I do audible things. And I could never like I hated the side button because I with that case on, I couldn't half the time hit it either didn't detect the right number of times or like it just didn't work. Like it just, it was really didn't line up very well. Yeah. It was really, well, it lined up, but it was just really stiff. It's kind of yeah. like hitting that button on the mantis. I've had cases like, the like power that button. before. And so I, I, I got fed up with it like two days and I'm like, that's it. Went to Amazon. Well, no, it's not the power button, but that, you know, that little case that it comes in and it's got that really, you got to oh, press no. the hell out of that. Um, I don't because I have it in an executive. That's well. I, you threw me uh, for a minute. I'm like, wait, there's a cutout. No, the button, no, you just the, tap no, it. No, the it's... bumper, the bumper case, like you got to push like mad. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Is your iPhone case like that? Is it that plasticky? It's kind yeah, of it like, It's a hard plastic. plastic. But then yeah, I the went on Amazon. Of those volume I went on Amazon like, like a couple of days ago and I looked and I found one and it specifically said in the little bullet points, it's like easy to feel buttons and stuff. And I looked closer at the picture and I could distinctly see like, oh, here's a distinct up and down button. Let's get yeah. that one. And now I absolutely love it because I can actually use my buttons correctly now. Mm-hmm. So even the plastic cases that Apple sells, the clear ones, sometimes they have those buttons on the side and they're really hard. I saw my mom when I went back to visit last time and she was all distressed that her buttons were hard to press and she was take, ready to take a letter opener to the side of the case. And I said, no, no, Just no, buy no, a new don't one. Do it's that. okay. Oh my. I like the silicone She doesn't cases. understand. They seem to be the most flexible, the silicone ones or the yeah. ones that have the buttons that are um, convex. <laughs> um, mm. So they stick out a little bit more. Yeah, this one the there. The Apple leather case has a convex button on the side. Audis, not innies. Yeah. I like the leather cases. This one's kind of plasticky, but it's very minimal, and the buttons feel still like you can feel the click in them. Even it's really good. Mm-hmm. Serena, you were talking about the extensions where where it is. So mm-hmm. if you go in the settings, then go to Safari, and then you go to extensions. extensions but then oh. down here, there's extensions customized the way Safari works. Extensions can change the appearance or behavior of web content, add buttons to Safari, and more. So if you swipe one more time, more extensions, button. you tap oh, on it. Oh, okay. So it's in the settings. So, it's not in the App Store. Okay. Well, listen. Now it drops me into the App Store. It's like a gallery. So it goes to a section of the App Store that has oh, extensions. Funny. Yeah. I hope they make that a little bit better for people because nobody, the average user is not going to discover that. Yeah, but it's only <laughs> four swipes and two taps. I mean, come on. I think the average user doesn't know what extensions are. Probably, I think if yeah. you say extensions to most of the users that I know that are novice or that are just learning, they're not going to know what a Safari extension is until you explain what it is and how it works. So I think for a lot of new users it's going to be fairly new lingo yeah. to learn a little bit about web browsers that was a feature i didn't even know that they were adding that i'm glad they did yeah it's been there we we're talking about ios 15 and the beta 2 just dropped and it seemed to fix it's oh fixed wait the share before sheet. you go there you're trying Uh-oh. to avoid my question tell us the story about your phone well i did order the 13 13- Pro Max 256. Did, did you get them to cancel it? No, they, they didn't. They just, you know, gave me that wink and the nod and it showed up here and it's sitting in the box still. And the case is here. Oh, so cool. I know. That. And then the boxes and the other one back showed up today. So oh, I'm going to go to the too? store and return it. So you have time to copy your data and send the old one back? No, no. I'm going to send the new one back. Oh, oh. Because oh, it doesn't make oh. sense. Uh, after listening to Tech Abilities, they had a show last <laughs> week. I listened to it and I actually paid attention this time. You know, this without time. the form factor changing, I would be stuck. Oh, yeah. I would be stuck with this 12 Max Pro Max sitting here forever because I would have to pay this off. Okay. You mean the 13 Pro Max? Well, the 13 would be on the new one. I was thinking of just paying this one off and keeping it. Gotcha, gotcha. But then I would have two almost identical phones, one with a better, bigger battery. Yeah, a lot of fasterness. Fasterness, take that word. Wait, wait, I'm confused. Fasterness. I'm confused. I'm so confused. Oh, if I was to pay off my phone. You weren't going to get rid of... Wait, what's I was going to do the trade You weren't going to get rid of... Right. So I would lose this but phone, okay? So then I would have the 13. Right. But then next year when the form factor Which you would changes ditch next year. and I could right. open it up with my finger on that button possibly. Right. That's what I'm really So looking you're going to ditch 
That's what you'll ditch the 13 for, right? Yeah. That's when I'll ditch my 13. Right. But I don't want to ditch this phone now. If I wait till next year, I will own this phone. Oh. It'll be sitting here as my demo phone for the betas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'll have that and other one. And it's still in circulation. Yeah. So it's it's worth it because they're still making it. Who's going to want to buy a phone? Well, I, I understand your, your point when you talk about circulation. Yeah. I mean, you're a manager at a store, and when you have products and inventory and stuff like that and something's discontinued, you look at your inventory and go, oh, crap. <laughs> Oh, well, makes sense. Right, makes sense. But it's perfect. Sense. But anyways, I just I just figured it, it's nonsensical, you know, to actually upgrade right now. So anybody out there that is on the fence about this, I think the twelves are pretty good. I think the elevens are pretty good. Depends on where your battery life is. If you want to pay for a battery or if you want to upgrade, they say that the bang for the buck, the best phone out there right now is the thirteen Pro for size and everything. It's the Goldilocks, they call it. Yep, because it has the same camera as the Pro Max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a bigger battery than that. That's the one thing the 12 Pro is lacking that the 11 had. I I miss, hate to say it, I miss the 11. Much as I love all the MagSafe and stuff about the 12 line, the 11 had the battery. And uh, so I think the 13 is going to be really sweet. I tell you, my 12 Pro Max, when I put it in my pants and I'm outside working, it it can pull my pants down almost. (laughs) I hope you got a good belt. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's, got, it's got some, some weight suspenders, to it, you know? maybe. And the 13 is a little <laughs> bit heavier yet, so. Good Lord. I love the 12 Pro. Well, at least you kept like, your old one. You have one on each side, Jeff, so at least your pants will slide down. So, evenly, yeah. I don't no think you're winking. understanding <laughs> what he said, Rocky. He said he's returning the 13 Pro. Yeah, I know. Okay. I get it. He doesn't, he realized that all of the commentary we made was impractical, and he's going to keep his 12 for another <laughs> year. That's cool. A lot of people are choosing to do that. Well, and I'm. And it's a good economic economical decision it's a good phone you know and, it's not a bad choice and going really. from the 10s max like i definitely i do notice a little bit of a performance increase a little especially bit. with your running <laughs> with your running voiceover you know it, things are just generally a lot smoother oh, yeah. it's and so I'm, fast what i'm really wondering though is i was using my works uh you know my work phone my 8 plus boy you know i'm kind of wondering if a lot of the focus issues that people are having like i don't really have them that often not even so much on my 10 but and not hardly at all on my 13 pro max but god i was trying to do something in the outlook app that we have to use for work this morning and it was jumping all over the place so i almost wonder if some of the jumpiness is just that voiceover can't keep up on older devices and it kind of just jumps more no i think it's app specific because when you were saying like i haven't had any of these issues and i know you're not a facebook user i like double checked and in facebook it is still jumping like you'll be going through your notifications if you have more than like eight or nine notifications it you'll get down a little ways and then it'll jump you all the way back to the top of the list and then there's still some focus issues in the app switcher where you'll be swiping and you're like oh here's facebook double tap and then it opens the the previous app does anybody (laughs) have the bb app i do not news. no it's like you know i'm one of those ones who you know direct touches the phone you know i like to slide down to the middle or something and then just start swiping or you know t- because it's usually just a list of different news articles mm-hmm. but every time you touch it it like jumps six oh, seven sure. things the screen just jumps to another Jeez. spot that could be in per app thing then yeah i think it's probably i don't, I don't know if there's some it's probably a programming thing because it doesn't happen in every single app like i had plenty of apps where the like it's ironically, Sorty Quest does not have any focus issues. It goes where you want it to. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, for a lot of the apps that I use, at least on my personal phone, it's been pretty solid as far as not jumping around as much. Right now there's a bug with iOS 15, but it's not particular to any phone, any piece of hardware. It's a software problem. It's especially for Braille. BSI and sensitivity is lost on some times it just goes away. So there's a bug, but it's nice to know it's a software problem, not a hardware problem. I do notice that uh, I, I did read an article about that a little bit earlier today, and I haven't really seen it when the phone has been unlocked, but I had have it once or twice where, because I've heard a couple other people say it too, where when your device is locked, especially the new phones that don't have home buttons, if you touch the screen, you know, you can kind of wake it up. And I've had it maybe twice now where it 
I have to actually hit the side button because it doesn't always wake oh, it up yeah. when I touch the screen. I have to tap three times, two times, three times, sometimes like, hey, and then it, and then I can slide up to unlock. It's really odd. That especially happens if it's right after you've washed your hands. I don't know what it is about it, but well, if yeah, you just your washed and wet. dried your hand, no, mm-hmm. no, like if you've washed and dried your hands, the mm-hmm. devices are not as responsive immediately thereafter. It's- so that'll happen to me on Monday. <laughs> Could be something to do with like temperature then maybe, huh? But yeah, I have noticed that part of the screen. Otherwise, my screen has been... Well, actually, there's that. And the other thing that I've noticed, and I, I, th- I don't know if it was late 14 as well. Does anyone really have find that like they really got to like exaggerate the scrub back gesture? Because half the time it doesn't... You got to do it a few times for that one to work. It depends on the Where app. Or it didn't used to. Not the scrub. I have trouble with the two fingers. So I'm a Braille user. One of the things we do when we use Braille is we have a two-finger swipe to the left to erase an entire word. Mm -hmm. So if you're going along and you flick to the right to space or to the left to backspace, sometimes it's kind of sluggish. And I'll I'll flick to the left with two fingers to erase an entire word and it does nothing. And I'll flick and it does nothing and I'll flick. Finally, I'll take the other hand and swipe, you know, and move my fingers a good Mm -hmm. two inches down the screen. And then it'll decide, oh, you want to delete that word. Okay. Or well, I'll tap a button and the double tap doesn't take and it doesn't take. And it, and finally, I'll just go split tap it and bam, it takes it on the first try. So it's almost like it's just a tad bit sluggish. And I almost wondered if I have a glass screen protector on my phone. And, uh, it's you know, I thought maybe I've never had that before with the screen protector. But maybe it's just a tad bit on the thick side or something. Because I, I do see and it's really intermittent. It's not anything I can pin on. Yeah, I mean, the only... The only gesture that I really have trouble with recently is getting the scrub gesture. Like I used to be able to do a pretty, you know, I would just do a, you know, quick, quick little back know, in the day, huh, Jesse? Gesture. Back in the day. Um, but now you really have to kind of exaggerate it a lot more uh, to get it to work. Like I do that in Twitter quite a bit, and it kind of just doesn't always respond as much as I thought it would. Something that I noticed today that I was having trouble with is the three-finger quadruple tap. And it was like screen curtain on, you know, speech off, screen sc- Wait, yeah. <laughs> no, that was four oh. taps. It wasn't picking it up. That does happen to me too. But on my watch, I got a, a new band for it, you know, and everything. And the watch has this cover for it. And I was getting that delay. It wasn't taking my double taps, you know. It wasn't taking That's my... That's weird. I ripped it off today. I took one of my bands <laughs> off. There could have just been a piece of dust or something that had gotten under there, too. As soon as I took it off and I touched the screen, everything was it like... Was boom, boom, bang, mm. boom, 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 Yeah, boom, I did yeah. that cover. My Series 4 watch, I've noticed it's a lot more sluggish with the new watch OS, at least with voiceover. You know what? Mine died the other day and it died with voiceover running. So I went, oh, crap, my watch died. I threw it on the charger, and I came back four or five hours later, and I picked it up, and it was making noise. You know, it was vibrating in my hand and everything. Put it on. Wouldn't talk. Wouldn't talk. I'd toggle voiceover off and back on. The watch would go, Broop, and it wouldn't talk. I wonder if the volume got turned all the way down by accident. No, it was making the sound. I turned the volume. I double tapped on the screen with two fingers and slid them up. The volume should Subdue come the up. Volume. Yeah. Yeah, didn't do it. And voiceover's not running because when I would triple tap, it would go bleep. It would make that little noise that it does. So I had sound. No voiceover. I went to the app on the phone, opened up the watch app, opened up voiceover. It looked like it was running. I had to hard reset the phone. That's so weird. Before voiceover would come back on the watch. There was nothing I could do. Watch 8? Yeah, nothing I could do. And it's kind of scary to hard reset them because you're like, do I have emergency SOS on or not? Because it's so easy to activate. To- it's not the watch. Oh, I set the phone. the phone. That's super weird. And the weird. phone wasn't the problem, but resetting the phone because the phone wasn't seen was weird. I couldn't make changes to apps. I couldn't. It was like the it would see the watch, but I couldn't make changes to that is very odd. Anything. I couldn't turn apps on and hmm. off. It was like it saw it, but it wouldn't let me do anything to it. But it said it was connected, so when I restarted, it fixed it. So if your watch stops talking, the moral of the story is you might want to start holding down buttons on your watch. But before you try that, perhaps try hard resetting the phone first and see if, if just reestablishing a connection is enough to scramble its brain back into the proper hmm. order. Otherwise, you're risking maybe inadvertently triggering the emergency SOS yes. feature and not so realizing easy. you've done that until it starts calling. I've turned that off. I had to because it's all, how do you I turn, because it's the same button to turn the 
freaking watch off as yeah. it is to do emergency SOS. And you ever reach into your bag or something yep, and you yep, hold and that you button it. down? I always reach into my pocket or my bag or my mm-hmm. purse. And next thing I know, Siri, <laughs> I can't, I can't understand. I, yeah, it's like. Because it's this shocking noise when it does it. <laughs> it does. It's obnoxious. Yeah. It's like a guinea pig on steroids. Yeah, and it's loud. I keep my volume way down at like 20%. The world doesn't need to hear my speech, but all of a sudden Siri's shouting. Siri's got a different volume to it, though. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't like when the updates happen. Like, my watch, I let it update overnight, and then all of a sudden I realize it. But a lot of people were saying that they were having trouble when they upgraded to iOS 15, and then the Watch 8 came out that they were having syncing problems and stuff. So, hmm. Mine Hmm. updated yesterday, and it seems to be doing fine. Yeah, and I updated to the beta that's running now, and things are working good. 15.1. 15.2. 15.1 beta Beta 2. Beta 2. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the screen sharing, it's reading the names now and reading the titles, everything like that. The sounds for the text messages is back, uh, sounding right, you know. It just sounds right. working better. I didn't know the sounds were messed up. That's interesting. I don't know. It's, it's just like when things go back to normal, you don't notice anything. <laughs> it's like, because it's normal, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there weren't any for a while. You'd get a text message and there was just nothing. Well, it was intermittent though. Like, and I could not, at first I thought it was people that I had pinned. Where it would mm-hmm. like not, but then it happened on other ones too. And people would be like, I texted you. I'm like, I've been on my phone this last hour and didn't see anything. And then you go into message and sure enough, there's like several unread 15. messages. Yeah. It's super mm. frustrating. I'm glad that they fixed that. They did not fix my keyboard bug though, just for the record. But I, it, I got it. I got it, it to it. finally read on uh, beta two. It's now reading the word. So I it's typed, doing it correctly. I did B-R-E, and then it said bread, and I said, okay, I'll try it. And I hit space, and boom. Is it reading it? Did it so when you hit space, did it read bread again? Yeah. Or did it, okay, so yeah, maybe so it said it right. twice. Mine works. Good. It said bread, I well, hit space, and then it said so bread. It's, it's reading the autocorrect stuff. What it is is, Jeff, I don't know, you because I had you messing with it too, and you were like, oh, God, this is horrible. It's intermittent. So like if I typed, like I said, if I typed like O-D, and I meant to type of, it doesn't, it, and I'd hit OD, but then space, it would just hit, say, space and not read what it autocorrected. Ah, uh, so you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. But are you, you, are, are you to, on beta if two? If you don't get that little sound, you don't get an autocorrect, right? You no, you can turn, you, you can it, turn the sound. Sa- little- I, I have that, I don't like the voiceover sounds. So I have them turned off. But even okay. if you did get the sound, you wouldn't know what autocorrected to. Like, did it correct to of or if? Oh, because it wouldn't say the word when you. Exactly. Or. or right. So I, I, I'm on the public beta, so maybe 15.0. One beta two will come out tomorrow for me because that's the only thing that I don't like about fifteen is the keyboard bug. I worked well, around it, but today was the first day. I did it last night, and today was the first day because I went in to make sure predictive was turned on, and then words. Well, and- auto text or predictive because the predictive is a totally different piece of it. <laughs> Well, you can go into keyboards and turn on predictive. You can go mm-hmm. into accessibility and they got typing and then they got... It needs to all be in one place, honestly. Uh, yes, they could consolidate Because then to have this. it speak auto text, it's under spoken content to tell it to speak auto text and auto corrections. Right. Wow. And it's not saying echo Because the predictive... Anymore. It's- yeah, is different. You know, now mm-hmm. we'll go over here. Now we That's like they don't put tomato paste near the spaghetti sauce in the store. That's crazy. Well, the other thing that's annoying too, gosh, is my screen brightness kept going to zero by itself, which I remember that being a bug before. Oh, that's and awesome. Oh, mine did that. Well, I what love you that. Do. See, I, I what I you, I have some sight though, so it's it's disturbing. Oh my God, I would <laughs> um, love, you know what a pain right. it is every time to have to always remember to turn it. How how often do I turn on the screen for somebody who can see like once a year? Well, this would happen by itself, though. So, like, you'd set your brightness to 47% or whatever. And oh then, like, God. one day you'd pick up your yep. phone and be like, what the heck is going on? Why is it so dark? Oh, yeah. Mine well, did that in some weird... it's super like, easy to fix, though. 14, you just go into the display sighting settings and turn off auto brightness, and it will not do that anymore. Because something weird with the auto oh, okay, brightness... Yeah. Yeah. I've turned that picture off that. forever. It'll yeah. turn it back on. I yeah, because I leave mine off. at zero and auto bright. It was just the opposite of you, Serena. I was getting Would so it turn it back up? It kept turning it back up, and yeah. it's like, I this is nothing for me but a battery killer. So you might as well turn it off, and I leave it at zero always. I wonder I how it is for sighted people, though. Like, because with the screen brightness at zero, I don't know, Jesse, maybe you can let us know. Can you see anything or is it like my phone's broken? <laughs> oh, I don't care if they think it's broken. I hit the screen curtain too. You know what? Let them think it's broken. Then they're less likely to. 
I just mean like somebody who who's using their own phone that doesn't use voiceover. Oh, they can't. They can't use it. I don't think. No, I I just did it now and I turned it to zero. Can you use it and right. like you can see it, but it's it's really dim. Um, My partner can't use it. It's 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 kind of like more or less like an empty void, where a screen curtain is pixels that are black. You know what I mean? Yeah, but this is just very dim. But can you read the text? Can you make out what it says? With the uh, I mean, I can see the larger text. I can see it says 10.04. Oh, wow. I just think that would be very upsetting for for someone who's sighted to all of a sudden have their phone be at zero brightness. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, for no, sure. I mean, it's, it's still there because you can turn it back up. But if As upsetting as it is for me daylight. when something is supposed to talk and it doesn't. Yeah. Equally upsetting. Oh, in daylight, you wouldn't even be able to see it, probably. No, in daylight, not a chance. Yeah. Nice to know. Well, here's the thing. Last week, I had power go out like over five times, and it, it was dark. <laughs> Very mm-hmm. dark. And I noticed I ran into the wall. Um, <laughs> you know, But you're... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. No, <laughs> I mean, laughed. I have peripheral sight, so I do use some of that, you, you know, all the time. use more than you realize, huh? Well, <laughs> I actually have these uh, frames on the wall in these couple spots, but I put these little 3M tabs on the bottom so they don't get straight. Uh, but they're actually in type of a hallway approach where a lot of people people who are visually impaired will kind of like bounce off that and then you straight <laughs> it's kind of yeah. a, a spot that you hit that aligns you with the rest of the house <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so i made sure that that was intact and all of a sudden and Lori used to knock that poster off all the time you know it's like so that's why i did that well when the power was out i found myself like cutting the corner too sharp and hitting the mm-hmm. fridge or doing this and it just really makes you think how you know when you have low vision you do have beacons you do have pinpoints <laughs> and stuff that mm-hmm. you know you you're guided with and you're not using all your skills but after i tell you once i hit my elbow good my skills came back you know a little bit yeah. better like, i hit my shoulders a lot some of that's yeah. psychological though if it had been daytime you wouldn't have done it well I, and what, honest it, to god your, your vision even if you have no sight will change depending on whether or not you think there's light in the room. I swear to God, I can walk a straighter line if I think there's light coming in that window over there than I can at midnight. And there's no practical reason for it. It is still as dark at noon as it is at midnight. My Kinda eyes like do not see any light, but I train. swear to I God, think I, I see can. it. I think I no, can. No, I think I it's can. It's not. It's not desperation at all. It's purely my eyes. It's seeing probably what just I a know human nature is there thing. Yeah, taking over what from saying. what I used to see because yeah. there's a time when I could have seen light coming in that window. So I still anticipate that there's light there, mm-hmm. even if there's not, and it it affects how That's very I move it. It's really just. Dis- it I mean, I, it's interesting to experiment with well, actually because I see at night I'm running into things and I I don't have any more vision at night than I do during the day but my eyes are going it's dark in here <laughs> your brain's like it's dark I don't know <laughs> yeah. my eyes don't see it but I know it's there so my brain That's sees so it. interesting it's almost like you know how when somebody loses a leg how they have yes the that's exactly right, what right. it's like yep, it sounds leg. like that yep. that's exactly I mean I'll think the sun's coming in a window and then discover that it's a heater and then all of a sudden that where that window should be is dark and it's pitch black. It's like wow. it fakes my brain out. It's really disturbing. But you, could you imagine what we could do if there was some way... Like, you know, they have cognitive like, retraining. It. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's intriguing because I know intellectually, I know that I'm not seeing it, but yet... I, psychologically very the, interesting that yeah it's kind of fascinating it takes, oh, it's can weird. astro it's so weird. function in the dark she'd probably just trip over him because he'd probably be in some weird spot <laughs> 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 with only being 18 inches tall i mean geez oh my gosh would he fight with my roomba <laughs> but i tell you what after this power went out you know for a long enough time and i almost turned amish <laughs> i was walking around even when the power came back on i didn't turn the lights back on in a sense. you were so used to it. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and I thought to myself, to am it. I getting acclimated or adjusting to this new level of blindness? You know, like if you've lost sight throughout a period of time, you reach these stages when all of a sudden you realize, oh, wow, I got to make, you know, when, when you can't use the magnifiers anymore and then you can't do this and you got to use a cane or something, you know, there's certain levels of stuff. I think this power outage 
for me, woke me up to, I'm at a different spot than I was five years ago. Interesting. Because it happens so slowly and so subtly. You probably, especially with, I know you primarily work from home. I know you, you would go downtown for different things, but that's to familiar environments, you know? So it's probably been all these really, the same things happened to me. I haven't had to go up, you know, to Denver or anything in two years now. And I'm terrified to go next because I'm going without Weston for the first time whenever I finally have to go up there for something. And I know it's going to feel different because I'm sure my vision has changed and then not having a guide dog, it's a whole different trek. <laughs> then, so you know. that's a big deal. And it's not even the vision is the whole, the travel, the way that you travel is so different with a and dog. And how people treat and you is different. Too. It is very different. I and noticed that for sure. It is very different. And one thing, even me, and I'm a pretty comfortable traveler, you know, I, I don't have chance anymore in the thought of going back into the city. Again, just with a cane, you know, it's it's mm-hmm. it's very different than going through oh, yeah. a crowded city as, with a dog. As soon as you show no confidence and that big scarlet bee is on your chest, you know what I mean? It's like people are just right away, you're a Wait, blind Wait, who shows person. no confidence? Well, as soon as if you do, <laughs> like someone that uses a guide dog, all of a sudden the guide dog's sick and they have to use the cane. That things. first yeah. time out with the cane, it's different. It's just it's totally uh, there's different. sidewalk shrapnel. I try all sorts so of stuff. hard to show people. I so hard. Look, you might hate your cane to death. Find a cane you like, but don't be that person that that hates to use a cane so much that you don't carry one with you because if you ever get stuck, you know you pay the price and and mm-hmm. it's you that gets stuck, right? What if a dog gets sick and you have to take it to the vet and you don't have a cane? That's a horrible place to be stuck. Well, there's a reason it's lasted a hundred years. <laughs> you know yeah i just i wish i could put one in everybody's pocket you know just for that that emergency and i don't think people realize how different cane travel is versus guide dog travel because cane travel is so tactile like you're like okay there's the bench there's the tree guide dogs they just cruise right by yeah. here to the mm-hmm. next curve right. you know point a to point b and you don't know what exactly. you missed Exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, and it's it's really interesting because, you know, I've never used a, a guide dog because I have enough vision, but there are times where I will, in really busy or, you know, kind of difficult areas, I will use a cane. Like, even just seeing, like, how people react to me or other blind people with mm-hmm. a cane, oh, and then, like, yeah. if you're if you're using a dog, you know, it's like, oh, they, if they're of a dog, oh, they're confident and they're independent, yeah. but, like, if you're using a cane, it's like, you know, you kind of see them clanging and they bumping off of the... Almost this helpless. Bump. Yeah, yeah, it's like kind of you're bumping into things. and That's what I was yeah. talking about, the confidence thing there. As soon as you show a little bit of that. And it's unfortunate because a lot of the dog handlers that get dogs that don't like to use a cane get dogs because they're underconfident with a cane and they feel more confident with a dog. Right. But that's a pseudo confidence, right? That's bolstered by the dog. Until they learn that, you know, well, until they and, really do it for a while and realize that they're the one driving, whether they're driving exactly. the dog or the cane, right. that they're the one in charge. It takes a while to come to that place and sighted people don't well, see Well, and the, that, other, thing, the other thing with a cane is, like you said, you made the perfect thing where you said it's a tactile, a lot more tactile experience. So as long as you're not like, you know, waving it around crazily or like, you know, you're, you know, you're going to. That's not how you look around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your cane is going to bump into things, you know. You, and you that's may the way it should be. Balling. Right. Yeah. But they see that as, oh, you're actually, your cane is bumping into something. So that mm-hmm. makes it look like you're bumping Especially into in something. crowded environments. That's where it's yeah. especially. I always tell people, you know what? The cane did its job. When they say, oh, watch out. You're going to, oh, I didn't want you to hit that such and what, you know. And it's like, well, but that's what the cane's yeah, for. The cane, the cane, cane did it, its not job. Me. Better the exactly. cane than my head, you know. Right. That's, the cane that's, hit it, not me. The cane did exactly what it was supposed to do. Oh, I saw, I saw you hit that pole. I was like, no. Well, my cane hit it and that's what mm-hmm. it's for exactly. right exactly yep yeah yeah it's yeah. to detect and you're only going to detect if you hit something within so, so many people but you can't educate the world and you know it's really hard to expect people to understand it so i think when you after you use a dog for a while you kind of float through the environment a little bit right where with a cane you're actually like you know you're pinballing <laughs> ping-ponging pinballing a little bit more but anybody that has had a nine to five job or you know a regular job re- regular routine people talk about oh we don't train route travel but if you have a job you're route traveling and exactly. you know well, what sure. you get that down pretty that little tap there it is that boom but you're there you know it's 
Oh yeah, you'll know a sp- very. There are certain places where, like, I know there's a specific a dip in the sidewalk. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and it's funny because people think guide dogs are like just amazing, and they are. But I, when I remember very vividly, and this, this honestly probably impacted my relationship with my guide dog for a very long time. I think it was either the early in the first week or really early in the second week. I can't remember. He ran me into a pole. <laughs> oh yeah yeah Absolutely. like because he got distracted by i mean it's sure. a guide dog town it was san rafael mm. so there's dogs everywhere and he was like oh another dog and he ran me right into a pole he felt horrible you could tell and it ruined my confidence for sure yeah but people don't realize they're dogs well it was really funny because <laughs> a, a oh yeah and then they say oh that dog needs more training that no, just makes me so they're angry animals. it's oh, like no, no, no. no they're they, they're, and they, they're fallible like anybody else you know, i don't remember they, how he finally got him around it but like a friend of mine, his, his first guide dog, I kind of had to laugh because he would always either make this misjudgment or just not care or whatever. He would kind of assume, oh, well, if I can fit under this thing, you can too. Here we <laughs> My go. My first dog was like that. They My- don't train mm. them to look above their, their heads. It's very difficult. My San Rafael dog, he couldn't look up. It's hard for a dog to look up. Yeah. Yep. My black lab was just like that, my San Rafael dog. Trees. It was overhead tree branches and limbs. Yep. It was always leaves in the face. Now my second two were trained very differently and they did clear obstacles. But I noticed that after having had that first one for 14 years, it took me years to trust that the second one, there was always part of me that was expecting that branch Mm -hmm. in the face. And it always kind of blew my mind that he would go around them because I know how hard it is to teach a dog to look up. That's very difficult. I'm impressed that they were able to do it. Yeah. Lori and I were visiting my folks in Fredericksburg, Texas, and Fredericksburg has this I area. I know where that's that a- is. It's the cutest town ever. And they have a store there. They have lots of stores, a tourist trap type of thing. But you can go into all these stores and we we're going into them. And all of a sudden we're walking along. There's four of us, you know, and Logan. And all of a sudden, whoosh, Lori's gone. <laughs> She's just oh, gone. No. And Fred's, where'd Lori? And Where did he do? He went into the dog toy store. Oh, oh that's oh, adorable. No. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she's like 10, 15 feet into the store, you know? <laughs> it was so He's fun. like, please buy me one. one. Yeah, I want all of these. Go in here, and this is where we want to go. I've been in six stores of your folks, and now we're going into mine. It's so funny yeah. that you say that, because when I was training with Weston- That's um, precious. We were in downtown San Francisco, which I'm sure near the Embarcadero, I think that's what it's called, the financial district. Mm-hmm. The lady that happened to train, her name was Angie. She trained Weston, so she had to- I it was know cost- Angie. And Angie worked for Fidelco when I went through. She, I know Angie. It was hard for her the first few days because since she trained him, he kept looking back at her like, you're my mom. Oh, yeah. You're my trainer. And when we were walking downtown, he kept stopping at all the bars. And she was like, I swear, I have not <laughs> taken him into <laughs> any of these bars. Bar. Yeah, like, I don't sure. know why he keeps trying to take you into the bars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Dogs are that's just so funny. funny. What's next on your topic, Jeff? We've we've totally derailed you as usual. We just derailed per usual, you know. Doesn't oh, matter no, how many yeah. of us there are, we're all gonna derail you all the but, time. But you know, if I take out the guide dog <laughs> part, yeah, I feel like you should leave it in. I'm serious. Like I I know that it's not tech no, related, but I, I feel no, like it's I, a great I tell you discussion what, with, with chapters. No, he, won't. he doesn't like spontaneity. Did we get everything or did we? I think we got everything uh, and we even them. threw in the dogs, <laughs> even the dog bones. Astro, we started with I d- Astro. I we love the name. I think I really do mm-hmm. love the name. Astro. That's good. That's a cool name though. But what was the actual robot name? Rosie? Cool name. Rosie. Rosie. See, that would have been actually Astro. a little cuter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's probably nah, Pat. Astro's cooler because it has. Fe- it sounds futuristic. Rosie. Serena, let's Rosie. patent no, that name right I know. now. Astro. Astro's cooler. Me Does too. anybody remember G-Bone Lost died. in Space? I never watched that show. Lost in Space. It. There was a robot oh, on there. Do you know cheesy. what the robot's name? Oh, no, I was thinking a different one. Never mind. The robot's name was robot oh that's real creative it's a good, it's a good trivia question though hmm. well it was before robots were ro- i mean you know that was the robot you know what i mean back then i think the best part of astro is his name oh pretty cool i still can't believe he's so short i really would have thought that it was more tall yeah i kind of want to drop kick him now you know <laughs> i was okay with him when he was four feet tall but now that he's 18 inches or whatever i think okay my Roomba would be a match for you buddy <laughs> i think he's only 26 pounds 
You could no. probably drop kick it. 26 pounds is pretty substantial for an 18 inch tall thing, though, if you really think about it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, but is it going to get stuck like the vacuum cleaner? It's got do? giant wheels on it, though. No, because it won't go underneath stuff if it's only 18 inches. It'll probably just. Oh, God. <laughs> Stephen King could write a book about this thing. I just, I see it. Want to play? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, somebody will buy it. Well, you could watch that new modern interpretation of Child's Play where it's actually a robot doll. Oh, God. Child's Play gives me nightmares. I see it stealing knives from the block and coming after people, you know? I just, <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't have the <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> Jeff Jeff did point out it doesn't have the thumbs, so. <laughs> no thumbs. So we're safe. It might have Meg safe. Open up your yeah, silverware door. Yeah, I was going to say, what magnetic. if it's magnetic? Safe, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, it's magnetic. All the knives <laughs> come at you like <laughs> Astro <laughs> Scissors hands. Oh, my Astro goodness. Astro Scissors hands. <laughs> He'd steal all the cutlery out of the drawer. Tink, 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 tink. That's hilarious. Stephen King probably oh, is God. listening to this going, Oh, they took my title, dang it. <laughs> dang it. hard out, dude. Yeah. And then cue our funky music, right? <laughs> and for more podcasts with the Blindness Perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at BlindAbilities, and give us a call at 612-367-6093. Leave us a message and let us know if we can put your voice on the next podcast. Drop us an email at info at blindabilities.com and download the free Blind Abilities app from the App Store and Google Play Store. That's two words, Blind Abilities. And from all of us here at Blind Abilities, through these challenging times, to you, your family, and friends, stay well, stay informed, and stay strong. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, bye-bye. When we share what we see through through each each other's other's eyes, eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge bridge the the gap between between the limited limited expectations and the reality reality of blind abilities. abilities. abilities.